I'm going to take the concept of this, combine it with this, and using this, create this. Welcome back to the channel if you've been here before and hello if you're new. Today we're going to be mixing it up a little bit, trying something new, both in terms of the video format and what I'm going to be crocheting. So I taught myself to crochet a few years ago now specifically because I wanted to learn how to make amigurumi. I just happened to be scrolling through Pinterest and randomly came across a picture of a crochet dragon and was like, yep, I need to learn how to do that. And then I went on a week-long YouTube binge learning the crochet basics. Since then, and I've rarely made anything other than amigurumi. So much amigurumi. Other than that, I've made the crappy scrappy scarf as a learning project, you know, as we all do. I've made a couple of beanies, one of which was for an infant, and I've never even... I feel like I'm admitting to some sort of crochet cardinal sin by saying this, but I've never even made a granny square. Not one. So my non-amigurumi crocheting experience is pretty limited to say the least, but I plan to change that in this video by crocheting my very first piece of clothing. Crocheting my own clothes is something I've wanted to try for a while now, but it seems that every time I go to attempt it, I get distracted. I'll sit down to start a cardigan, and then three hours later, I've somehow ended up with a bloody whale. But there will be no more surprise whales from here on out. I intend to get this done. I've decided to make, or at least I'm going to attempt to make, a raglan sleeve hoodie. I was originally going to stick with something nice and basic, just one solid colour and then maybe a different colour for the cuffs, the pocket and the hood, but that sounded really boring. So instead I'm going to take inspiration from my little buddy back here and I'm going to try and make a stitches themed hoodie. I'm planning to do one sleeve in blue and the other one in green. I'll crochet the hood in purple and the rest of the torso in tan and finally I'll make the pocket in white. I'm also planning to make some little amigurumi ears that I can sew onto my hood. I considered making an amigurumi tail to go on the back as well but given where I need to position that, that could end up being a literal pain in the ass so I think I'll pass. To make this hoodie, I'm going to be using cotton yarn and you can see the colours I intend to use over here. I know they're not an exact match for stitches, but they were the closest I could get. So I'll just call my hoodie a pastel stitches inspired hoodie and be done with it. I'm going to use a five millimeter hook for this pattern. And speaking of the pattern, I've decided against using an already existing one because I want to try and do this for myself. So instead I'll be going with one of my favorite methods, discovery through experimentation or if I'm being really honest, making shit up as I go along. Anyway, I intend to dive into this project head first, and given that my only crochet clothes making experience at this point consists of stitches over here, and my imagining of what Mia Chinen from Skate the Infinity would look like if he were an Animal Crossing villager, I can only assume that this is going to go flawlessly. What do you reckon? He agrees. Inspired by Kat Mia's confidence in me, I got to work straight away. The first thing I did was grab an old hoodie from my wardrobe. Because I wasn't using a pattern, I needed some way to figure out how long my foundation chain needed to be. And I decided that the best approach was to measure an already existing item of clothing because I would know it fit me. I gathered up my supplies, laid my hoodie out on a flat surface and began taking the necessary measurements, jotting everything down in a notebook as I went. Sometimes when I'm designing something, I find it helpful to have a visual aid or aids. And to that end, I quickly sketched out a design of my hoodie and included all the measurements that I'd need. Much more appealing than my messy scrawl scribbled in a notebook. Partway through this sketch, I realised I'd forgotten to measure the pocket. Whoops. I quickly remedied that by adding the pocket measurements to both my notebook and the sketchbook. And it was almost time to start crocheting. 
Initially, I was just going to wing it, but ultimately I thought it would be best to do some quick calculations and a bit of experimenting to find out A, what the ideal number for my foundation chain was going to be, as well as what round one of my pattern would look like. I was sure this was going to save me some time later on. Spoilers, I was wrong. But I didn't know that yet. I'd planned to take my crochet supplies outside because it was supposed to be a lovely autumn day. However, Bureau of Meteorology. More like the Bureau of Lies. Anyway, back inside, I used the measurements I took as a starting point and I crocheted my foundation chain in the tan yarn. After that, I began crocheting round one. Because I decided to make this hoodie from the top down, I was crocheting the parts for the back and the front of the torso as well as each sleeve at the same time or in the same round. Luckily, I remembered to change colour at the correct time for each sleeve. I was a bit concerned that the tan of the foundation chain would be really obvious against the blue and the green of the sleeves. But at this point, I just had my fingers crossed that it would be at least partially hidden when I attached the hood later on. To ensure that at least the neck of my hoodie fit alright, as in I could actually get it over my head, I stopped and tried it on. Success! This success, however, would not last long. When I did my original calculations based on the measurements I took, I decided to use three double crochet in the same stitch as my increase. I was going to place four of these per round, one in each corner. But as it turns out, this wasn't giving me enough of an increase. So after round two, I frogged the work I'd already done, planning to start over. I'd like to show you some footage from this part, but as it turns out, I may not have pressed record properly. Instead, here's a clip of my cat snoring. Kitty break over? It was back to the drawing board. I broke out the maths again, which, thanks, I hate it, and reworked the start of my pattern. Hoping that the new pattern I just came up with would work better this time around, I got back to my crocheting. And I must have done something right this time around because it did work out a lot better. I worked on the yoke on and off over the next few days, stopping periodically to try it on. I had a rough idea of how big to make it as I had measured the distance from shoulder to underarm on my old hoodie, but even so I still wanted to try it on to make sure of the fit. I don't know if you can hear the power tools in the background, but my neighbour is doing something. And mate, you sold a house two weeks ago, why are you still here? Back on track, when the yoke was finally large enough, I could proceed to crocheting the rest of the torso. But before that, I tackled the unpleasant task of weaving in all my ends. I didn't want to leave all of them to the end of the project because even though intellectually I know it's the same number of ends that I need to weave in, it feels like more when I do it that way. So instead, I would rather break them up and do them in sections. Annoying as it is, I am sure that future me is going to thank past me when the time comes. With the ends taken care of, well, for now at least, I started to crochet the torso. As the torso grew longer and longer, I would again stop periodically to try it on. I wasn't overly concerned about having the torso be the exact same length as that measurement I'd taken previously, but I did want it to fall to about hip height. I also planned to add some ribbing at a later point, so I had to take that into consideration as well. Before I added any ribbing though, I needed to crochet the sleeves. Starting with the right sleeve, I joined the blue yarn at the armpit using a slip stitch and then continued crocheting in the round. I gradually decreased my total stitch count until the sleeve reached a diameter that I was comfortable with and all that was left to do at that point was add some length. I stopped adding length to the sleeve when I reached my wrist, again keeping in mind the fact that I was going to be adding some ribbing later on. When the blue sleeve was finished, I went back and repeated the entire process on the green sleeve. By this point, I had something that was looking 
pretty hoodie like if minus the hood at this point so it was time to add the ribbing i'm just about to start crocheting the ribbing for my cuffs as well as on the bottom of the torso here but as it turns out i only have one skein of my orange yarn thought i had two turns out i've only got one and i'm not sure that's going to be enough the question now becomes do i dare tempt the wrath of the crochet gods by playing yarn chicken and I think the answer to that question is yes, yes I do. Worst comes to worst, what I'll do is take inspiration from stitches again and I'll crochet the ribbing down the bottom, half in orange and then half in the green because I've got some of that left over from the sleeve and that's what his legs do look like. So that's going to be my plan going forward. Hopefully it works out okay. Turns out it did. Apparently I had the crochet god's favour that day. When I'd crocheted all my ribbing, so that would be at the end of each sleeve as well as the bottom of the torso, all that was left to do was to join the ends. I did that by whip stitching the two sides together and weaving in my ends securely when I was finished. While I already had my needle out, I took the opportunity to weave in some of my other loose ends as well. The next part I tackled was the hood. For a while, I went back and forth as to whether I should crochet the hood separately and then sew it on, or if I should crochet the hood directly onto the body of my hoodie. In the end, I went with the latter option. I just thought it would be a little bit easier. I began by working out where the hood would start and end, marking each respective point with a stitch marker, and then joining my purple yarn with a slip stitch, I just began crocheting. For the first three rounds, I increased as I wanted the base of my hoodie to flare out a little bit, but for the majority of the hood, all I did was crochet back and forth in rows. Like I'd done previously in this project, I would stop and take breaks to try my hoodie on, just to make sure that it was roughly the right size. In this case, I obviously needed the hoodie to go up and over my head. When the final row was crocheted, I pulled up with my hook, leaving a long tail for sewing. The last step was to actually form the hood from the rectangle shape that I'd just crocheted, and I did this by folding the top in half and then sewing the two sides together. With the hood complete, I could start on the pocket. For this, I once again referenced those measurements I took from my old hoodie, and I crocheted the pocket in white yarn to match those specific dimensions. For a finishing touch, I single crocheted around the edge of the entire pocket. I just reckon this looks a bit neater than leaving the raw ends of the rose exposed. I had also planned to do this on the hoodie, but unfortunately I didn't have enough purple yarn left over. Here was me thinking I'd run out of the orange when it was the purple yarn I should have been worried about the entire time. The last bit of crocheting I needed to do for this project was to make the amigurumi ears. I'd already crocheted an amigurumi stitches, you may have seen him hanging out in this video at some point, and I was originally going to use the ear patterns I created for him on my hoodie. But I sort of figured that even using the thicker weight yarn and the larger hook size, they'd still end up being a little bit too small. Which, as it turns out, wasn't a big deal. All I did was add some increased rounds to my original pattern to make the ears larger, and that was it. With the ears crocheted, I could finally put my hoodie together, although, to be honest, there wasn't really much to do in terms of assembly. Because I'd crocheted the bulk of my hoodie as one piece, the only assembling that I really needed to do was to attach the inner part of the ear to the outer ear and then to sew those complete ears onto my hood. When that was done, all that remained to do was sew on the pocket. With the sewing out of the way, I did a quick last minute inspection, checking for any loose ends and weaving in any of those that I found. And then after that, ta-da! 
it's a little bit too big to fit in the frame all at once. So that is my stitches hoodie. Um, I was actually going to wear it in this section, but it is very humid here today and this thing is thick and heavy and I put it on for about 30 seconds and it was like being in a sauna. It was just like a sweat box instantly. So I don't know if you can tell, but I'm very hot and sweaty. <laughs> but anyway, I had a heap of fun making this thing. So I do plan to make more clothing, whether that be another hoodie or a jumper or something in the future. Uh, I am happy with how this one turned out. There are a couple of things I would do differently next time, for example. I think I increased out a little bit too far, so my jumper is a little bit baggy under the arms. Uh, nothing too major, but I would change it next time just to see how it goes. Um, I might also try shaping the torso a little bit. It's very boxy, which is okay if that's the look you're going for, but if you want something a little bit more shaped, I might decrease somewhere in here and then maybe increase back out. Uh, what else was I going to change? I'm not too happy with the hood shape. I don't really like this little point, or at least not for this kind of hoodie. That sort of would be on like, I don't know, I think that would suit more on some sort of fantasy cloak or something. And for that reason, next time I might try crocheting the hood separately and then sewing it on later on. Um, also the ears, they're a little bit floppy, so I might have to insert something in there to keep them upright or find a better way to secure them. But overall, I am super pleased with how my very first hoodie came out. I'll have to wait to winter to wear it because I will die if I wear it any sooner. But that's okay, I can wait. I might have a go at making some lighter weight clothes that I can wear in the meantime. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know because I'm considering making some more like this in the future. And for now, that is all. Thank you again for watching. I will see you all next week with another video.